Okay, everybody. So we have gotten a lovely little batch of parts here from Banggood. And we're going to build a drone. But right now we're just going to lay out all the parts. We're going to make sure we got everything. We're going to see what flags come up and what we got to overcome. So it's the Martian 4 frame, which is an older frame. It's kind of a clone of the Alien, but much cheaper. It's what basically what steel runs. But a good price on it, and it's good enough for for the budget that we're doing here. So first what we got for parts for the frame. So we got the front part of the frame, the back part of the frame. And then our arms are going to stack in between here and lock in the middle. And this piece goes on out towards the back. <clears throat> now this frame also comes with a power distribution board, which you would normally be putting in here if you had ESCs. If you had four individual ESCs, you'd be using a power distribution board. But we have a four in one ask, so we're not going to use this. It could be used as a structural member, but I don't think we're going to include it unless we need to, unless we really think we need to. And the frame also comes with these camera uprights and these standoffs. However, I think we are going to forego those because we are going to be using the shorter standoffs because we're going to slam this and make it nice and skinny and I mean to help with that we have a nice little Cadex ant very small and we're going to be running a tight little 4-in-1 with a Mamba F405 MK2 and that's going to give us a tight little stack that we should be able to fit in 20 millimeters. So I think we're going to custom 3D print a TPU mount for that camera once we get to that. So as we pull our 4 and one ask, we've got some gummies. We're going to... We have some gummies and some standoffs here that we're going to use to make our stack. We're going to use solid bolt all the way through instead of using the little nylons. There's some nylons that came with this, but wherever I put them, but we're not going to use them. Oh, they're in the... They're, they came with the frame. A lot of people use these nylons. I kind of don't like them. So I will probably just run one bolt all the way through with gummies to keep everything separated. These little ring gummies and these uh, other gummies. Choice of pink or blue. So when we look at this, one thing that we notice when we take our, uh, our ESC and we did not buy we could have bought the uh, MK2 stack, which includes a 4-in-1 ESC, but I already had the this ESC sitting around, so to save money, I didn't. And that would have plugged in directly using the cord in the bag here. So as you see in the bag, we also have a, a capacitor, but there's already one on the uh, ESC. So we'll just go with that one. However, we have a... Uh, 8 pin connector and a 7 pin connector and if we read the writing right along there on both of them we see we don't have the same pin out. 
So we have to either unpin that connector and pull pins from this one and then shove them in the right pins of that connector and shove that connector in or solder directly to the board. And the board has these little, it has solderable pins all along the front of this connector. They are mapped out on the insert for the Mamba. You can see them mapped out right there as to what they are. So we either have to pull the pins from this and remap them into that connector and leave some blank in this connector or we end up having to saw, clip the ends, solder to the board. If we clip the ends we can make this nice and short and not have all the extra wire which is one option to go with but it's not too hard to tuck those wires in. We'll see, we'll figure it out as we go what we're going to do. But as far as orientation I think that's the orientation that we want on the ESC slash power distribution board. It's a 30 by 30. And that will give us our... So we came with two... I came with one XT60 here. Um, but I grabbed another one that I like a little bit better that I ordered a while back that I have on hand. It's got deeper pockets for soldering and kind of like them better. So on the original P... PDB, the reason they have it that way is because it solders in here and you just connect your battery off to the side. However, we're going to end up having our wires back here for our ground and battery wire. So we might end up having to use some wire and do a little off to the side here or out the back somewhere. We'll, we'll have to see as we get going through the build further on decide where we're taking that because we also have to fit on here you can see the little arrow there pointing to the front so this side up, that to the front there's a button there we're going to want to get at too and we're going to bring in these three would be for that motor, those three would be for that motor on the S underneath there, those three for that motor, those three for that motor. So you've got motors marked one, two, three, four. And other than that for components, we have our little CADX ant going up front, which takes up very little room, very tight, small little camera. Now it has with it this little kit, which has a larger mount that allows you to mount it in a larger sized hole which is what we'd be using if we were going to use these guys and mount it up there but we're trying to slam this thing skinny there's also a little joystick now the joystick you plug into the camera and you use it to um, adjust the camera functions now you can also do that by doing audio out through the flight controller typically on most of these flight controllers, but I don't think we're going to do that because I think once I have the camera settings done, I'll probably never ever ever go into the camera settings again, like once they're set up correctly. So I will probably just plug in this joystick, set the camera settings once, and then forget about it. Unplug the joystick and leave it off. So I probably will use this once and then never bother with audio to my to my video. Now for other components we have four motors Fire Edition Race Star 2207S 2500 KV. So this is by that you can tell quite obviously a going to be a 4S build. Why not 6X or 6S because I don't want to. <laughs> 4S is good enough for what I'm doing. This is a budget build. 
it's just to have fun with. It's just something that's hopefully going to be pretty reliable. Other than that, other pieces that we need to finish this up is we need to broadcast our we need to broadcast our video. Now we have this beautiful little item here. So we have this beautiful little FX2 Ultimate Mini AKK video broadcaster. Look at this little guy. He's so cute. However, he's pretty mean. He goes up to 1200. Goes up to 1200 milliwatts, which is big on the range. Um, has smart audio. So this smart audio we probably will hook up. 7 to 26 volt range. It's got a good range. It's, it's quite a good little unit. So we're going to have to do some looking into this guy, figure out what all the higher functions are, and figure out what we best want to use in him. But we probably will be hooking up smart audio on this. And he's quite compact, so he should fit in this frame quite nicely. However, we're going to have to do a little bit of figuring out back here what we're going to do, because he's got to fit back here. and. These holes are standoff holes, so they're for the standoffs for the frame. There's no actual mounting holes for components back here, even though there is room. So you either have to stick it down with double-sided tape or zip ties or something, and then figure out, you know, figure out how you're going to do that get it but it will sit back here quite nicely and the other component that we need in here is actually this uh, we need a receiver for our controller now we have this little receiver here I will have to figure out what connectors I need for it yet but this is for fly sky so it'll be what I inverted IBUS, probably. We'll have to get that going to the flight controller, and it's going to have to sit in here too. And so probably set it in here so that we can get this going out the back. So I'm going to have to work on how I want to mount this stuff because I probably want. Well, mind you, there's probably room to put him in between the flight controller and the camera. Still have the camera protected. And then mount him back here with his tail sticking out. Then I can just stick a lollipop out the back. That's going to require custom mounting him and custom mounting him and custom mounting him. And then figure out my stack. Then I'm going to have to bring my XT60 out either the back or the side, depending, depending where it looks the best. And then we have the standoffs will be all coming up, and we will have our nice little slammed profile here, and our carbon fiber top with our battery skid so our anti-skid for our battery and a couple straps to strap the battery on and you should have a nice tight little drone after so these are all pretty budget minded components they're decent quality they're not bad at all but they're all pretty budget-minded. Now our VTX is going to outrange our our radio 
transmitter and receiver very, very, very muchly because what we have is we've got a, a FlySky i6XFS. However, uh, this one I've modified, so I took off the original antennas and I put antennas out. And then I've actually, so I've switched to external antennas and I've actually uh, put dual 2000 microwatt boosters on the antennas. So I've also, I've also done a uh, USB bank, USB power bank mod for the battery. So we are be able to transmit a hell of a lot more than usual for our power. So we're going to have our VTX and our RX up and I'm not too worried about it because I'm, I'm always flying by myself anyways. I'm up in Regina, Saskatchewan. There's like, I don't even know anybody else who does this up here. It's minus 35 degrees Celsius outside today. So I'm not flying today. Obviously I'm this is why I've ordered this, is like I'm gonna build. <laughs> it's way too cold. So we've assembled some of the frame. Enough that we can get a good mock-up going. And we've looked at what some of the problems are, and we've solved a few of them. I've swapped out some bolts for other ones, where I think it's more advantageous and is to my preference. So we can take off our top with our battery anti-slide, and we can look at how this is going to sit. And now at this point, I'm going to have to take a break in the build and I'm going to have to get into the CAD software and I'm going to have to design my TPU pieces so that I can mount these components now that I know where they're going to go. So I think I'm just going to put the uh, FlySky receiver right here at the back stuck to the bottom. Now that could actually go on there with double-sided tape or a TPU mount because it's a pretty simple placement. However, this VTX, I want to uh, I want to build a TPU mount for it that slides over top of this post. And then I want to run that antenna wire right through there. And I'd like to do another TPU piece that this goes on to, that goes on to this post. Probably, yeah, probably this post. Maybe both posts, I don't know. But so that it can be screwed onto and off of easy enough. And then I'll run a lollipop straight out the back. And I can run these two out in a V back here, which is a pretty standard configuration. With this down, it'll keep it out of the props, and the lollipop's going to be between these posts, so it, it'll stay away from the props too. Now this should give lots of cooling for the uh, flight controller and the VTX and all the components because they're spread out pretty good. But this tiny little CAD X ant on the front, it's going to be pretty easy to find room for it. It won't take up much space at all. Now I ended up, I'll pull these components out, put them in the box over here. And we'll look at how I've mocked this up a little bit more. Now I ended up checking out my motor size of some of my screws because one thing when you do screws like this you don't want them too long. You want them just long enough to catch good in the bottom of the motor but not sticking up in, in towards the windings at all because if they hit those windings that's game over for that motor. So you've got to be careful on your motor screw sizes. and. Because the motor manufacturer is usually the one that sends the screws, they don't know how thick your frame is going to be. You could have a 6 mil frame or a 5 mil frame or a 4 mil frame. They don't know. And even if it's a 4 mil frame from different manufacturers, it can uh, vary a lot. So here we've got.
got this so that these can just come in like that onto the onto the esc on these bottom ones for each motor and we can map those out in BL heli if they're not right there or or uh, or, uh, or beta flight but as for our stack what we've done is these standoffs these metal ones are the ones that go in the frame so I've taken bolts that are long enough to go through everything but not long enough to touch the top just metal bolts one metal bolt all the way through and it's come through just like it does to this down to this uh, large nut that sinks into the frame sinks into the frame here then there was a plastic piece that keeps it for keeps isolation keeps a layer of insulation between the uh, carbon fiber frame which will conduct electricity and the uh, and the esc so then I put little green gummies on top and I put the pink gummies on the flight controller and that creates enough space that there's no collision and there's an air gap between the flight controller and the esc and that gives us enough room with and then just some nylon nuts on top to hold them down that gives us a nice nice slammed profile compared to these larger ones and I ended up because the front plate drops and the back plate goes up so there's a difference from front to back in height so I ended up using my 20 mil new ones on the back and then I ended up using the shorter of the ones that came with it that were for the back on the front with some nylon nuts to make up the height difference because before there was fair difference there was these for the front and these for the back now I've got the back ones moved up to the front. I've got these for the back, with those ones for the front with a nylon wash, nylon nut that I didn't use on the flight controller that came for that. And then that makes up the same height difference. So we get we get our Martian slammed down a little bit here. Now it would probably be possible if one instead of using a four and one esc was to move the esks out onto the arms such as is the older style before the four and one esks it would probably be possible to slam it down even more finished up our configuration here so we soldered on our leads to our xt60 we've got our xt60 mounted straight out the back we 3d printed amount for our VTX. We ran through underneath the ESC, the 4-in-1 ESC, and ran ourselves a nice little lollipop right out the back. We battened down our wires to our motors and we've soldered them to the leads. We don't really need to worry about the polarity right now because we can adjust that in the uh, in the flight controller when we do our adjustments there in beta flight and BL heli. So we can keep all of our wires just going straight. And there's a little bit of slack in them just for relieving stress on everything. These wires are still hanging out. These are going to end up being going to the flight controller. We still have to design and print a mount for our CADEX ant. But there's lots of room to do that because it is so small. 
there was a second capacitor that came with the flight controller, but it's the same as this one for, it's a nicer quality one, it's a higher quality one, but it's the same as this one, it'll work just fine. Now your capacitor, what it does is uh, it stores voltage. So when you put your battery in, it will store, it will charge up to the same as the battery. And then when you punch it and stuff like that, when there's a sag from the battery, it makes up voltage by letting the voltage out and it smooths out the voltage. So you don't end up with punching the throttle and getting your flight controller or your camera going out. So that's why we have these on here. And it also uh, takes out the ripples and bumps and makes your camera run smoother and you'll get better video. So we've got our first layer done and we've got everything laid out pretty well here. So the only thing we don't have connected on the ESC is the, is the uh, connection to the flight controller. We've got the map written there, and like I said before, we're going to have to end up making a custom connector or soldering to the flight controller. The flight controller will just fit on top of the stack like this. The next job will be to get that connected up to our peripherals. So we're going to end up figuring out our wiring into there, figuring out our wiring from our camera into here and figuring and connecting our receiver. Our receiver, I 3D printed a small a couple small brackets here that slide on the posts so that this will mount here. And it will slide down there and sit there quite nicely. And I will have to route these wires and we'll bring these out the back and we will try to create a mechanism so that they get a really nice 90 degree to 120 degree spread on there and then they'll just kind of trail out the back we'll get them down too a little bit so that they're not up in the propellers and they stay out of the props this we don't need to worry about it getting anywhere near the props because it can't really move anywhere so we're moving along nicely on this build. So next I'm going to actually look at the, uh, I'm going to download the manuals for the camera, the uh, VTX, and I have the layout here for the flight controller, so I don't actually need to download that one. And our uh, RX receiver, transmitter receiver, and I'll make sure I've got the right pinouts on those, and then I will have to solder them to the uh, to the place. And then once we put the top on, we will have access to the reset on the flight controller right here, the bind button on the receiver right here and the button on the right there on the video transmitter so that should be quite good so Mamba includes this beautiful little diagram here so we can see when we connect our VTX we've got video smart audio ground and 9 volt and when we looked at our uh, VTX diagram here we see 7 to 26 volts so we can bring 9 volts in that's why this exclamation's here so it's like well Make sure you use 5 or 9 
Let's see, we got five volt here, nine volt here, five volt here, ground here, another ground there, LED. So if we were to use the five volt, if we had a five volt VTX, then we would put it over here, which is actually meant for an LED out, but well, it doubles as an LED out. But the reason they put it there is in case you need five volts for a camera. But so we're 726 volts on our VTX, so we're going to put that there. Put the smart audio on the TX3, ground on the ground, nine on the nine, vid to the vid, just like that. And that will give us VTX with smart audio. Now our camera, we're bringing these two out to our joystick because we're just going to set up the camera and then leave it. We're not going to put it long term on here. Now we're going to tin these two because we're eventually going to put a buzzer on this one, but I don't have the buzzer yet. And then for our camera, we looked at our camera specs. I downloaded it from here. And we just got five volts ground and video. So I'm going to tin all five of those, but I'll only be using three. And then our receiver. So S bus inverted is what we have with Fly Sky, which means it's going to go to the S bus. So we got to tin this one and these two which is 5 volt and ground and I looked at I looked up the uh, manual for my fly sky and it takes something like 3.7 to whatever but 5 volts is within that so we can use this 5 volt and this ground and S bus and then beyond that once we get those connected we are basically done connecting things. Then we move on to configuring in Betaflight. And this is where we're at with the drone itself. We've got our joystick connected to the camera, which we will unplug later. We finished 3D printing our mount for our Cadex and and that cute and we've got our receiver we run through our XT60 on the back we've run our VTX now our VTX I actually added a little heat sink to the outside of just because it is a It's a fairly high power VTX, so I want to make sure it stays cool. So I've just kind of stuck a little heat sink on the outside of that, and hopefully between that and the props blowing on it, it'll keep it cool. Other than that, we've got our we've got our I bus from here we've got our four camera leads video smart audio power and ground now these two are a ground and power out that are going to get clipped off so there is kind of like a back on here which will output voltage I assume for using with a camera and if you uh, in certain applications, you're not going to have a flight controller to take power off of, or a good power supply, so you can power your camera with this. Because you could actually, if you wanted to, you could run your video straight to here. So you could actually run these two straight to a battery, run this straight to your camera, and then power your camera off there. 
However, you would lose all your on-screen display from your flight controller. But in certain applications, like uh, certain RC planes and whatnot, where you don't have a flight controller, that would be an interesting option. But in that, and then in that situation, you would be using your connector on here with your PPM outputs to each of your individual ESCs, and you, you'd be totally not having a, a, a flight controller, which is a very interesting application. But so I still have to repin. So I got to pull the pins out of here. I got to pull one of the connectors off of here, and then I have to custom pin this these pins into here so that I can plug that in also so I'm going to be pulling this off the stack I'm going to be pre-tinning my leads then I'm going to be remounting it on the stack and finishing up the soldering one that's on the stack but the build is coming along nicely I like the way it's turning out And if we put this on top, the camera is sitting nicely, it's well protected. Although I'm not totally sure about the offset of the camera. And we've got room for our battery on here. Our battery can be moved back and forth to get our balance proper. And then strap down. Now it is possible, there's room on here for a GoPro mount to go on top of here, but I don't run GoPros, I don't care. Okay, so here's something interesting. So I took the connector off one end of this harness because it plugs into the flight controller, and I took this end off of the harness that came with the ESC because it is so one's a seven pin one's an eight pin and the pinning is not in the same order as we see here on the maps now as I was repinning this we did our ground and we did our battery and we did not do our 5 volt 12 amp now that would be equivalent to a uh, Beck, basically coming off of this 4-in-1-esque. So it's outputting 5 volts, 12 amp, I assume, up to 12 amps. So that would be for powering 5 volt components. However, on this flight controller, there's no in for that. And there's 5 volt on here and 9 volt and 3.3 volts. So that tells me that there is a Beck on this flight controller. So we really don't need that wire at all. So that's a redundancy. And on this one we have an RX6, which would be if you want to bring in a from a, an ESC, if you had an ESC that had some functional device on it that you wanted to bring on on your on your UART six, and we also have Kerr, so Kerr is not present on this. So Kerr would be a current sensor on your ESC. We don't have that. So essentially, we only need six wires out of this controller or is it six one two three four five wires sorry nope six six wires we need six wires out of this controller so this one we do not need we will not plug it in because we definitely don't want five volts applied to anything on this flight controller input here so that's just something to watch for when you're repinning stuff like this. So basically, we've got this repin, so all I really need to do is plug that into that now. And uh, this wire should probably be removed from the harness so it does not ground out on anything and 
create sparks because it's definitely not needed in this application. So the full battery voltage of a bat here will go to the VCC and that will apply full voltage from the battery at battery voltage and from there this will this will create your uh, your Beck voltages your 5 volts and your 9 volts and your 3.3 so there's redundancy here that we don't need now, it would be possible to take this 5 volts off and run something else but that's just not really necessary at all so I'm just going to remove it from the harness completely but we've got our harness mocked up here um, basically repinned so I'll be going on to uh, pre-soldering these pads plugging in the harness getting it down and then soldering in my peripherals just something I wanted to point out on repinning here now if you get the full Mamba stack it'll come with the properly pinned It'll come with a compatible ask and a properly pinned harness. From the Mamba stack, I would have gotten the full stack if I didn't already have this ask. And it's, it would have just been easier. But, but this is what we're working with anyway. So in your application, just get the whole Mamba stack and then it's just with the 4-in-1 ask and it'll be just, it'll be good. Okay, so we've done our soldering. We've got our VTX soldered here. We've gotten rid of the extra wires. We have our camera coming, coming in here. We have our receiver coming in over here. Three wires. And we are pretty much ready to put the top on. We put a little bit of hot glue right here because I didn't want to go through all the hassle of making a 3D printed bracket or kind of put some way to hold these wires in place out of the way. And then over here we did a little bit of hot glue on the back. It looks ugly and messy, but I just didn't wanted, I wanted this uh, XT60 to be more secure. Now we're ready to mount the top on and on the top we're going to be using cap screws which are the rounded head ones because they don't dig into the battery so much and on the bottom I used the other head screws the uh, I forget what they're called because even if they grind down or get full of mud they're easier to get into with a socket and I mean on the bottom it's quite possible for them to get full of yuck Oh, one other thing you can do before you, when you do soldering like this, it's very close together. Take a continuity tester and check between the two posts for continuity, just in case you accidentally bridge it with solder, which could cause some smoke. That's a good way to check before you plug it in. We don't all have smoke stoppers, but that's it for this stage. See you at the next stage. So let's do a plug-in now that we've got it all together and see what happens. What do we got? Seems pretty happy. It seems quite happy. All the little lights are lit up. Under there.
So we finished our 3D printing and installing our new mount for the antenna. Should hold it in a nice place. We still have this dangling because we have not done our camera settings yet. So next we got to move on to binding. And the binding button is accessible right here. So we got to hold that in and plug it in. Now we've got that blinking. Then we should be able to take our receiver, hold down the bind button, turn it on. And then if we tip this over, that should be solid, and it is. Then we will tap the bind button again. Then we'll power down. power down. And that should be bound. So let's plug it in again. And we see that it is slow blinking, which means it is not connected to anything. Turn on the radio, and it goes solid. So we are bound. And there we go. So we can unplug this again. We know we're bound.